So here's Devine. Well, I got to go first. Just joking. Um, good morning, everybody. There you are, Kenneth. How you doing, bro? I'm good. Um, I'm the director of One Lexington. I'm going to give a really brief um, overview of what One Lexington is, just so we can kind of focus on some of the new stuff that we're doing. And we're going to kind of explain that through our, our model that we're working through. And so One Lexington started in 2017, um, I think under, I think it was in response to a high profile homicide that happened that year. Um, and I think due to lack of resources and obviously the pandemic hit a couple years later, um, it kind of lost some steam. And so after the pandemic and the social unrest, we saw that huge spike in gun violence. And so our mayor kind of revitalized the program. Um, and I started in summer of 2021. And so one Lexington's mission statement is to leverage government resources and community partnerships to reduce gun violence amongst youth and young adults ages 13 to 29. Um, that is the age purview that we chose because a lot of the violence, um, the drivers of violence and those being impacted were in that age group. And so um, we were trying to figure out how do we focus on the immediate needs of the community that was seeing record number of homicides, but then also create a plan to make sure that we weren't back here in 10, 15, 20 years. And so the first thing that we did is we did a lot of research and we studied what other communities were doing to combat gun violence. The good thing about that is we learned a lot um, that other cities were doing that were working but a lot of what we were seeing was contingent on the pandemic and the social unrest. So there wasn't much data out there because we were still in the middle of it. And so we took some evidence-based approaches from other places, um, but then we also realized that we really need a Lexington-centered plan. And so our national partner, Cities United, helped and coached us um, to build a strategic plan along with 30 other community partners. And those partners consisted of other government agencies. Some people in this room were in those strategic planning sessions, nonprofit sector, the faith community. There were youth in the room, um, mothers who had lost children to gun violence, those directly impacted, UK trauma center, the school system was present. And we pulled from their feedback, their expertise, what they were seeing on the ground, and we combined that with some of the evidence-based stuff that we were learning from other communities around the country, and we built our strategic plan that we felt would work for Lexington. What's going on in Chicago and what's working or not working in Chicago may work or not work in Lexington. So this wasn't a plug-and-play type of plan. So we created our plan. Um, we focused a lot on a model called Cure Violence. And later on today, I'm gonna send out some follow-up resources for you. We'll give you a one-pager of our plan, and we'll give you a little bit more information than we'll be able to cover today so you can really kind of look in-depthly at the work that we're doing. And so in the Cure Violence plan, there's a model called PEER. It's an acronym for prevention, intervention, bless you, enforcement and reentry. And so I'm gonna kind of explain some of the stuff that we're doing through that peer model. And this is just some of the most recent stuff. And again, we'll send out some more stuff later. So through the prevention piece, the way we identify that is, what are we doing before gun violence happens? How are we keeping young people from entering the cycle of violence? And so most recently, we just launched the second cycle of our One Lexington Violence Prevention Grant Program. One of our, our mandates early on was we wanted to be less programmatic and really wanted to build the capacity of other organizations that were already doing really good work. Um, that's one thing, I have a grassroots background. So there were actually, me coming into this job, I was aware of a lot of individuals that were already fighting this fight, but they were a little disconnected working in silos and a lot of them didn't know how to access government funding and so that was one of the things we really wanted to do so this program we are funding i think right now our first cycle we funded 18 different organizations 16 but then we also funded um, friskies which is the family resource centers and the youth service coordinators in i think 13 different schools 
all in areas where gun violence was at its highest in Lexington. And so we're putting the hands directly into those who are already doing the work, are on the front lines, um, that know what they're doing. Instead of trying to um, reimagine or instead of us trying to control everything, we wanted to put resources in the hands of those that are doing the work. Another thing, and um, Kenneth just walked in, he's heading our It Takes a Village summer mentoring program. And that's also connected to our It Takes a Village in-school mentoring program. And so we work directly with the Friskies at 11 different schools. They identify 15 to 20 students who have been directly impacted by gun violence. And then either one Lexington staff or our community partners come in and we have a weekly mentoring program with those students. And we focus on everything that a lot of teachers, to be honest, just don't have time to focus on because their mandate is to teach. So we're coming in, we're talking about um, conflict resolution, money management. Um, we have trauma-informed care support groups. We're talking about breaking generational curses. Um, and these are young people that we already have a connection with through our work in the neighborhood. And so that's all during the school year, and then we extend that into a summer program where it's actually twice a week that we are um, engaging these young people. And again, I think per the data, I want to say 90, I might be a little off, about 90% of the youth that we serve, and we serve over 450 a year, have been directly impacted by gun violence. They've either been shot their house has been shot up, they've lost somebody to gun violence, and so those are the young people that we are targeting. On the intervention side, um, which unfortunately we spent the majority of our resources on, especially in 2021 and 2022, is how does the city respond when gun violence is already happening? And so um, one thing we do is our crisis response, and that's probably the biggest part of our work day to day. Um, and it's not just a fatal shooting, not just an injury shooting, but what about those houses that get shot up, but it doesn't make the news because nobody gets hit. But those children living in that home experience that trauma. The neighbors experience that trauma. So how do we respond as a city? And that was a lot of our research early on. What are cities doing to respond? And a lot of cities were just focusing on the shooters. A lot of cities were just focusing on, focusing on those that were hit with gun violence, but we were noticing kind of that um, psychological impact of gun violence happening in neighborhoods. And so um, Kenneth does great work in leading our crisis response. So he deploys four different crisis response workers that we work with. And each of these response workers have a unique connection to a specific community in Lexington. Um, so I lived in Cardinal Valley for a long time, me and my daughter. And obviously we have a huge Latino population in Cardinal Valley. There's already kind of a, a disconnect or a lack of trust between the government, between public safety and communities like Cardinal Valley. And so when I first started, even though I lived out there a long time, going out there trying to connect with these families was tough. Um, but we contracted Nestor Gomez, who is a pastor, um, but is also Latino and lives in that community. And so he is now our crisis response coordinator for that area. So whenever there's an issue involving gun violence, he goes and responds. And the connections he's been able to make and the resources we've been able to get to people that previously we couldn't um, has been incredible. And so we have somebody that works in West End, somebody that works in East End. And again, these are individuals who grew up in those areas and are well connected. Um, and so moving on to the enforcement part of PEER. Um, obviously, One Lexington is a community organization, so we don't have any enforcement capabilities, but we do have a great working relationship with law enforcement. And also, I think our goal and what we see in our work every day is that lack of trust between public safety and underserved communities, especially communities of color. And you can't have a safe community with that kind of disconnect. And so our job is how do we bridge that gap in a safe way? How do we maintain their trust, but also bridge the gap between them and law enforcement? And so that's something that we are dedicated to moving forward. And then finally um, is the reentry piece, which I think coming out of 2022, that was our biggest gap. 
how are we supporting individuals that are coming home from incarceration, especially those that were involved in the cycle of violence? But then also the other part of that is what kind of alternative sentencing are we providing for judges? I know a lot of people um, feel one way or the other about the lack of accountability or they feel some of these um, people that are involved in the, in the cycle of violence should get more time or they get out too soon. But our thing is, you know, we can't control that. But what we can control is we can create more programming through our community partners that judges can lean on. Um, and so we work with um, Judge Minifield. We worked previously with Judge Devine. We work with Judge Gunther. We work with Judge Murphy, Thurston. So we're constantly in touch with them. They're letting us know the different young people that are coming into their courtroom, what they're facing, and we try to connect them with different resources. And so I'll, I'll close with this, that you'll probably notice the common theme through our work is all about partnerships. One Lexington is a very, very small piece of everything that's going on. I think we're just blessed to kind of be in the middle and just connect different organizations, um, kind of be a bridge to resources and the people that need them. So it's just all about partnership. There is definitely um, volunteer opportunities or partnership opportunities constantly. And so I would love to talk to you all um, more about that. And so, like I said, a little bit later today, give us a chance to get settled and we'll send you all some follow up information um, on our peer model and some of the other programming that we do. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I was trying to sit down before that. Um, is, there, is there any questions? <laughs> No? All right. I'll... <laughs>